Hey guys, um, yesterday I made a video about um, why I think Pope Francis is a living saint. And um, the name of the video was, is Pope Francis a living saint? And this morning I got up early this morning, I was rushing to, uh, to get to my route on time. And um, I seen a comment from a Protestant or a rad trad, Honestly, I, I honestly can't tell the difference in most of their comments, uh, but she answered the question, is Pope Francis a living saint? And she said, no, period. You will know them by their fruits. And I'm like, man, thank you. I said, thank you. I was so tired last night when I made that video and I, I'm so tired now, but I've been thinking about this all day, and even though my body is tired, my mind is tired, my spirit will not let me rest until I finish this video. Because I left out a few main points that are very important. Yes, you will know them by their fruits. Jesus said, tell us we can judge a tree by its fruit, you know? And I, you know, my wife, I remember one time she told me that uh, someone said the fruit was really bad in the supermarket, so she never bought fruit in that supermarket. But one day she happened to be in this certain supermarket and the fruit was great. <laughs> so you'll know them by their fruit when you see their fruit, not what other people tell you their fruit looks like. So I'm just going to give you the facts, you know, because actually the the, the, the uh, person, Rad Trad, Protestant, whatever she, you know, identifies as said, um, said, you'll know them by their fruit. It is what it is, not what you want it to be. And that is exactly right. I'm gonna give you the facts. So uh, here it goes, the fruit of uh, Pope Francis. Pope Francis extinguished, completed, totally annihilated the single most horrific scandal in the history of the Catholic Church. Nothing was so bad as the sexual abuse of little children by Catholic priests. And according to Jason Burry, the journalist who uncovered this horrible sin of the church, who they, they made the movie Spotlight of, according to Jason Burry, this problem is virtually gone because of Pope Francis. He said Pope Francis is head and shoulders above his predecessors, Pope Benedict and Pope St. John Paul II, in dealing with this situation. In fact, under Pope Francis, 10 years he was here, the average year, there's only 5.9 credible allegations against Catholic priests, 5.9. Now, Jason Barry says it's because Pope Francis uh, put up safeguards and he's right. You know, when I was doing catechism, I felt like I was joining the CIA, the background check they did on me, fingerprinting, uh, the way they lock up my church, you know, they, they keep it safe and there's always two people. I mean, there's a lot of common sense, practical safeguards that Pope Francis has instilled. Plus transparency. He's been open. He's been exposing priests. He's been open about it. He's, um, he's apologized, you know, he, over and over for this horrible sin. But praise God, this is something, I don't know why people aren't celebrating this. You know, this is one of the greatest... This was one of the greatest obstacles to evangelization. I'm telling you, I was a Protestant and I used this against you Catholics for years. And now our Southern Baptist brothers are dealing with the same situation and they're finding the same thing. Their leaders covered up and hid and, and a lot of, you know, and their percentage is, is even higher than the Catholic. You know, there's way more Catholic, so we have way more at our height. But at our height, and at our height of it, I think there was like... Um, in like 80 years, credible allegations proven uh, to be true, like 50,000. And that's a, like an 80 year period from 1950 to like 2020. And if you compare that to the United States public schools from 1992 to 2002, uh, they did a study and, 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 and research, and they found over 300,000 sexual abuse cases in the public school. So, so uh, Dr. Uh, Shakeshift, uh, I believe it was Carol Shakeshift, did this, led the study, PhD, and she said, we are way worse 
our, our abuse in the United States public school system is way worse than the Catholic Church was ever. And you say, how could there be 5.9? I'm always hearing thousands and thousands. Because the media distorts the truth. They keep showing you statistics from old. And then even if a new allegations, they're coming back from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. But current, what's happening now, it's 5.9 every year, Pope Francis. And in fact, in 2021, there was only three. And compare that with the, speaking of public schools, Chicago, one city, Chicago public school system had over 3,000 that same year. One school district, Chicago, 3,000 compared. So, you know, 5.9 is way too many, but I'm saying, you know, sin enters every, everywhere, you know? The Boy Scouts, the, the Baptists, you, you, see, you see it in every, where there's children, there'll be sinners going to try and hurt them. But Pope Francis has done more than any leader, any church or any organization to stop it. And, and it, it, that alone makes him a saint in my, in my view. That was horrible, we thought this would never end. How, he stopped it and nobody's talking about it, nobody's giving him credit. And, you know, Jason Burry is saying this is transparency, the safeguards he puts up. And I guess he's kind of liberal, so he don't want to say the other thing. Pope Francis said it's because of homosexual priests. And he told right out of the gate early on in his pontificate, he told a group of Italian bishops up until this point, you know, Pope Benedict and uh, Pope St. John Paul would say homosexual priests are not allowed. Uh, but if someone had homosexual tendencies as they were growing up, and they've been celibate for three years before a priest. And the bishop uses his discernment and thinks that he's not gay. He should let him in. Pope Francis says no. If a man ever had same-sex attraction, he cannot enter the priesthood. And even if he tells you he didn't, if you see a hint of femininity, don't let him in. Don't take a chance. It's Pope Francis telling the Italian bishops. And also, right out of the gate, like his first year... As Pope, he excommunicated Father Greg Reynolds. Father Greg Reynolds was an advocate of, of gay marriage, and he blessed a same-sex union. And he was excommunicated by Pope Francis. And I always get, well, what about McCarrick? He, I'm saying, what about McCarrick? He excommunicated McCarrick. Oh, he promoted him. I don't know how he got to the point where he could excommunicate it, you know, you know. Canon 1404 says the first seed is judged by no one. So I'm not going to judge his method he used, but I'm going to look at the fruit. McCarrick is excommunicated because Pope Francis. The other Pope excommunicated this guy. He's been around for 90 years. He's a dinosaur. Uh, but because Pope Francis weeded out these child predators in the church, the church was attracted to on fire Christian men who wanted to become priests. And that's why the latest Catholic University poll, very scientific poll, I, I did a whole video on this. Uh, you could look it up. I, I put Pope Francis purged liberal priests, said in 19, the, the same university did a study in 1965, 1965, 70% of Catholic priests identified as progressive liberals. 2020, only four point like five percent, four point five. They're virtually unheard of. Liberal priests are gone. Progressive priests are gone. Four point five percent. Most priests today, over ninety percent, the high nineties, identify as conservative Orthodox priests. Thank you, Pope Francis. And and what when what has this what has happened is it's drawing evangelicals that are on fire for the Lord. Uh, Protestants who love the Bible are coming in droves. It's like a, it's it's like a it's I'm telling you it's like an evangelistic uh, miracle, and I'm one of them. You know, I'm one of them that came. You know, Pope Francis drew me in, and in fact, under Pope Francis, the church has grown nine point eight percent or nine point nine. They're saying like nine point nine point nine point nine eight, basically ten percent. People say, well, it just kept up with world growth with birds. No, world growth was only 9.2%. It outpaced world growth. And this is a time when the world is getting very secularized, where the Baptists in the last three years lost over 500,000 members. The Methodists, forget about it. They're, they're losing churches. Evangelicals, there's a new thing called, um, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, now, 
when I'm tired, I forget certain words, but they're basically uh, deconstructing. It's like a new word. Everybody in evangelical circles, all my friends know, yeah, everybody's deconstructing. What does that mean? They're becoming atheists. They're, they're, they're rejecting the faith. And the Catholic faith is growing under Pope Francis. It's something to celebrate. And uh, there's many more st statistics. And Lord willing, uh, I'll do some more videos. I got a lot of great statistics. The truth, the fruit, how it is, not what, how I want it to be. These are facts. Uh, you know, Jesus did not lie when he told Peter, you are Peter and I will build my church on you and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. And what you bind on heaven, on earth, will be bound in heaven. And what you, Peter, loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Those keys have been passed down for 2,000 years. And Pope Francis holds those keys. And the gates of hell will not prevail against our Pope. And I'll say it again. I believe, I believe we're watching a living saint. So follow the pastor as he follows the master. And stay Catholic.